All right, we're going to call the meeting to the order. Colchester Planning Commission it is seven o'clock. So the first thing we got is uh, reserved for changes to the agenda items in order. We're all set there. Consider warning for public here amendments to the Colchester Development Regulation Supplement 46. I'll let uh, Kathy Ann go on from there. Yeah. So we'll start with the memo here. Um, so this tells you at the start of the memo, for anyone who's following from home and hasn't been following, the commission has been discussing for the better part of 2023 potential amendments to the Colchester Development Regulations. Uh, we are referring to these potential amendments as Supplement 46. Um, the entire text is included, uh, but for commissioner reference, uh, you see a few um, bulleted dots here. Those are changes since you met last month. Very minor, but those are those have been incorporated, the ones that you directed. Uh, so we talked of uh, 2.09A was uh, the types of hardscapes that were exempt or driveways are exempt. Um, so we've got rid of that word specifically that commissioners didn't like, replaced it with the word note. Um, congregate housing had one leftover um, proposed 55 rather than 65 to search the document. It should all say 65, or 55, 55, not 65, um, throughout there. And then lastly, uh, Sarita had brought up this question about um, electronic messaging signs for schools. Um, so I looked into that and what I proposed here, um, you can read it in the red line, but it says um, basically um, use 5.10 in table 1A. Um, so that is, that, that is the use for schools. Um, so it would be secondary education, uh, vocational schools, um, and um, other institutes but not training facilities or ballet schools or anything like that so that was the proposed fix there other than that nothing new no new no new items <laughs> um, no no uh, new changes other than those the full list is listed below so that's there um, there are two recommended motions um, one would be to adopt the amendment and adoption report as a reminder anytime you do a set of changes to the regulations you have to file an amendment and adoption report with um, the department of housing and community development um, and that adoption report addresses i tell you guys uh, when people come before you about uh, requests to the development regulations that's the document that says are you in line with your plan that's the one where you're attesting that you are so you have that copy of that draft in here. Um, it's fairly short, um, although a little bit longer than I think some of the years, because I was trying to boost up the affordable housing component there because that's one of the questions they ask you. Um, so the first motion would be to uh, adopt that. That is specifically a planning commission function. The select board does not actually adopt that. You guys do. And that gets submitted when you are sharing it around. Um, so that's that would be potential motion one. Potential motion two would be to warn the public hearing. At the last meeting, we talked about doing so on January 16th, because alternatively, it would be January 2nd. It's a tough time, I think, not just for commissioners, but for the public, because it's still sort of a continued holiday time. Um, and it just gives a little bit extra time um, through December. Um, so that's the potential motion. If you make any amendments, you could um, add those in there as well. Below that, uh, can just, I just can I just ask a question about yeah. one? I, I don't want to change anything, but I just number uh, letter O. I don't want to change it or anything, but I just don't understand it. So I just was yeah, wondering if you again. could just explain. Oh, the, I don't sure. understand the language. Yeah. So this 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 came from um, S one hundred. So that's what prompted this. Okay. So part of that direction that came out of the Home Act was that you have to have the same dimensional standards for duplexes that you do for single families. Our regulations prior to this potential adoption say that um, you need to have extra road frontage for duplexes. Um, so what that means is that um, if I have a lot and 
I want to know um, if I can put one, two, three units on it. There's a road frontage requirement that goes with it. Um, for single families, it was less than for duplexes. The state law says that you have to treat them the same. So part one of that amendment is to make sure that it's the same requirement for single versus a duplex. The other thing that we talked about, this was back when Zach was here, so it, it goes back a few months, yep. um, was that the, the frontage requirements were really high. Um, and so the second part of that is to reduce those a little bit. Um, it doesn't increase density. The density is still going to be the same. It just means that, especially if you have weird shaped lots, where well, you could have a very large lot that sort of tapers a little bit, not necessarily like a traditional flag lot, but it could still taper a lot at the road. That drastically limits what can be built mm. on the rest. And so what we talked about is, do you really mean for that to happen? And I think everyone agreed that no, that wasn't the intention. Um, it wasn't to penalize lots that just had sort of a weird layout. Um, and so the frontage requirement is reduced via O um, through all of them. But we still kept it, I think, fairly, I don't want to say fairly large. I think it was a, it was a first step. And maybe you guys can talk about it at another time. But it was take, take that first step. Um, some communities go as low as 20 feet, whatever it takes to get a roadway in with a little bit of snow um, treatment on either side. Mm -hmm. I think the lowest that we are showing here is 50, if I remember. Um, Great, thank you. But it had been like 100, 150. Oh, interesting. Okay. Yeah, I just didn't understand the language and the concept. Yeah. So thank you very much. So those are the two changes. One was to make sure that they're the same, and the other was just to do, reduce them across the board. Yep. Um, because they were fairly large. Great. OK. Let's. And I can review. I know some of this we haven't talked about in many months. If there's anything else you guys want to refresh around, just let me know. Happy to talk about it. I thought there was something in here. I can't find it now. About the uh, the affordable housing, the density increase, and the floor increase. The floor increase. You put that in here now too, right? The floor increase for the bonus. Yeah. Yeah, that's been in there for some time. Okay. That shows up, I, I think, we in. I thought we had discussed it, so. Yeah, yeah it's a very specific. I think it's called out as its own item here somewhere. That's what I thought, and I just couldn't find it fast enough here. It might have. So the listing that you see here has been truncated just a little bit. Because this is a, a formal warning that also has to get in the newspaper where we pay per word. <laughs> um, so some of it had said per S100 or just language that wasn't really helpful and a warning. So yes, the list that you were looking at here is a little bit abbreviated from what you have been looking at in terms of fluff words. Okay. Um, but that, that is in there. Ah, oh, F. F, okay, I knew it was going to be Update in there. GD3 FBC street tables to accommodate required additional floor bonus. Okay. Okay. So, um, let me just talk about a potential schedule for this. It's going to be a little slower than we've done before, I think, just because of where we're falling and um, in the, the change of the year and the budget season. Um, so what I'm showing you here, just so you can follow along, um, January 2nd, you'd agree at your last meeting, no meeting January 2nd. Um, we can talk about that later if you decide you do want to have a meeting. But there, um, there would not be a warning. That would be before January 16th. Um, so that would be the public hearing. Um, Depending on how, um, I've been in communication with the t uh, town manager's office. Um, when you have delivered supplements to the select board before, you've done it in two different ways. They've received them in two different ways. You don't know which way they'll want to do it this time. Sometimes they just like the delivery and they'll do a public hearing warning for a later date, but they don't necessarily talk about it the day that they get it. Um, one other time that we've delivered, they said, yeah, talk to us. We'll walk all the way through it. We'll do as a select board, give you all our thoughts, remand anything ahead of doing a public warning, a hearing for a public warning. 
warning for a public hearing um, <laughs> at a later date. Um, I don't know which they'll do. Um, I'll confirm more of that next. But either way, uh, what I've planned here we could potentially be as soon as January 23rd, you do a delivery, whether that is just a formal delivery or if it's an actual presentation remains to be seen. Uh, but it would be great if um, you know at least two uh, members are able to attend uh, in case there are questions or there's a lot to work through. You guys have seen a lot of this, but it'll be a long chat with the select board because there's a lot of items. Um, that could happen as soon as January 23rd. Um, if not January 23rd, it would likely be um, March just because of um, all of the meetings associated with the town meeting day and the budget meetings that um, the select board have, they have a lot of hours, you know, set aside for that. Um, so those are potential dates right now. If that works as I think it will work, as it did with the last meeting, you would have that, that delivery um, on that date, potential presentation, potentially not, but they would warn a hearing on that day. Um, and that hearing, because again, because of the budget, um, we're suggesting March 12th, that falls after town meeting day. Um, just to clear up all, all that time for the select board. Um, sometimes the public hearing is over in two minutes. Mm -hmm. um, last time we got very, very unlucky and it happened to be on the same evening as a room full of people. <laughs> Um, thankfully, it didn't have much discussion, and then we waited out the next item, and, um, and they, they vote on it later in the evening. Um, that's how it worked last time. Uh, and then your other meetings, uh, January 16th and then February 6th, um, agenda items TBD. By then, we'll have heard back about any grants. So that might kick off, we might do some work planning. You may or may not have another uh, commission member joining you by, by that meeting. Um, we may also pull up back, uh, Karen Adams has some uh, updates. She wasn't able to join us at the last, last meeting, if you remember. Uh, she'd love to give you guys some updates on some of the stormwater work um, that's going on that impacts um, you know, some of your work as well. Um, so that probably would happen in February. Uh, probably convene as the um, public information committee for the um, floodplain CRS community rating um, survey that we that you operate as, um, yeah. and then again back to your regular schedule, March fifth. Karen, right. we meeting. need to do our motion. Can we knock that out. We, do a motion. Okay. we need a motion. First motion. First motion. Okay, I make a motion that we accept the amendment and the adoption report as drafted uh, to be included in the public warning and distributed accordingly. Okay, second? Second. All right, any discussion? All discussed? All in favor? Aye. 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 The motion passes. So, and motion two. That, we'll go to motion two for a public okay. warning. Uh, I make a motion that we warn for our Planning Commission public hearing at 7 p.m. on January 16th, 2024. Boy, sorry to say. The, uh, the proposed amendments to the Colchester Development Regulations, known as Supplement 46, and as reviewed and considered this evening of December 5th, 2023. Second. Second. Discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion passes. Thank you. Thank you. There we go. Close that up. So we're at comments and questions from the public. We're all set with that one. Information items and staff updates. I think you got most of that. Anything you're missing on that one? Uh, I don't really have anything to add for you. It's been a quick month. <laughs> you see our report. Um, yeah. Those together every month. Yep. So we're planning. Yep. Go right ahead. Yep. Just about the reports. I was just wondering. It looked like there were um, a lot more health inspections. Were there a lot of health inspections more than normal? It looked like more than yeah. last year or last month. Um. 
they are very cyclical. And a lot of our health inspections tend to be rental inspections. So especially around change of seasons, especially in the winter, we get a lot because people will call and say, my heat's not working. We are their first call when that happens. Um, hopefully there will be less in the future. Um, attending a meeting next week, the legislature passed, uh, it was supposed to be effective in July, um, a direction that the state Department of Building and Services is supposed to take on these rental inspections now because a lot of towns don't have the capacity for this or the knowledge, really. Who am I to know if the electrical is working in an apartment? Um, oh, that's interesting. That's a health, that's, that's considered health. Yes, so, so rental housing um, goes first to the health officers. Your current health officers in Colchester are Seth Lasker and I. Um, I am very thankful for Seth because <laughs> knows a lot more about this stuff than I do. So there is a rental inspection. So that's why we tend to get a lot in the winter, especially early winter when people are turning their heat on for the first time. It's okay. just... Just curious. Yeah. It just Sometimes it's mold. Sometimes it's just a disagreement between a renter and a landlord and they involve us. Um, okay. So nothing glaring. No, I always I, get nervous about septics. You know. When yeah, we that's it. probably once a year we'll get a surfacing, like a, a, a failed system mm -hmm. where stuff is surfacing. That happens about once a year, but that doesn't make up most of them. Okay. Almost always rental housing. Thank you. Tip. Meeting schedule. I think you discussed that. Yeah, Pretty straightforward. Agreed. Yeah. All right. So we need the motion for the minutes of November seventh. All right. I make a motion that we approve the minutes of November seventh, two thousand twenty-three. You need a second. Second. Yeah. All right. All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion passes. It's simple as that. Ah, I know. We did all our hard work. Are you motioning to adjourn? Or? Mm -hmm. Oh, I can make a motion yes. to adjourn. There we go. <laughs> We need a second. Second. All right. All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion to adjourn.